Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for, How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing Thanks well. For Thanks for joining so us for today. Me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, Blake gave you an introduction, but I would love for you to tell the people that are watching now and later, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, uh, what do you do at Twitter? I noticed you, I think you made that, you joined Twitter maybe a year ago or so. So yeah. what's that been like? And then, um, yeah, and just tell us a little bit more about you. Absolutely. Um, so Jasmine James, um, engineering manager at Twitter within our engineering effectiveness organization, um, based in Atlanta. Um, as you mentioned, Kelly, I've been here for a year. Um, I'm primarily responsible for developer experience um, within our EE, as we call it. Um, and really what I do is try to create a great experience for our internal engineers by partnering to solve productivity challenges. Um, it ranges in a ver like a variety of challenges across the organization, um, but ultimately we provide tools that make our local development environment conducive to productivity. So things that make their lives easier as well as documentation partnerships. So when it comes to adopting new technologies that engineers, you know, constantly have to do, we try to make that experience great for them. Um, prior to this, I was at Delta Airlines establishing their tooling to um, support a cloud tra transformation um, and also drive technical and cultural adoption of cloud native development. So a lot of what ATL talked about previously was shifting left. Um, we did a lot of that driving the cultural changes that it takes to really be um, productive when it comes to cloud native development. Um, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. And so when you, um, it seems like you're a big advocate for cloud native then. Um, and, oh, absolutely. And part of your job, it sounds like, is to build, you know, to solve developer pain points and create, you know, more productive workflows. How does cloud native play into that? Like, why is, where, where do those two converge for you? The cloud native absolutely. movement and developer productivity. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's a, it's a, there's, it's twofold. I think that you have to first understand what the pain points are um, very intimately to know exactly what tools to choose to solve them in the best way. Um, because there's a variety of ways to, you know, make the lives of developers easier. Um, but how can we make sure that we're leveraging the latest and greatest to make sure that they're also um, have, having the ability to use these things, CNCF projects, right? But mm -hmm. a lot of it is just understanding the problem to know what tool to use. So that's the one way um, that I address that. What's the most common uh, developer productivity issue you run into? Um, I most common productivity issue. I think that a lot of the time um, it relates to like building um, and, and and we build more frequently now, right? We're adopting these uh -huh. CICD practices. So understanding how we can optimize those builds and not necessarily do them all the time, just when needed, right? Um, and yep. making sure that optimization is there. Um, productivity, you know, I think is an interesting thing because many people define it in different ways. It's, you know, is it uh, the times a the number of times a developer commits to you know master right? But I think right. that ultimately throughout the software development lifecycle, productivity um, is the whole thing, right? So uh, we're everywhere from the you know defining requirements, making sure they map cleanly to um, you know code changes, all the way throughout the deployments to production. So just understanding where those you know kind of bottlenecks are, and then surfacing them to my other peers within EE to help me solve for those. Awesome. Um, so you are also a co-chair for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, correct? Yes, yes. It's an so, exciting time. It's a great role to have. So tell us about that. So obviously this is a, a KubeCon uh, episode, themed episode. So tell us what, you know, what are you looking forward to and um, what do you want people to know about the conference and, and, uh, and yeah, what, what takeaways would you like people to walk away with today? Yeah, I think, um, one, the role has been great. I've got the opportunity to work with some awesome co-chairs, um, Constance Caramales and Stephen Augustus, who have been doing this for, um, I believe, over a year now. Um, so learning from them has, has been fantastic. Um, also, being represented from an end-user perspective has been really neat because um, I've it's so really just been a consumer of these products, right? And both of my roles, time at Delta, um, time at Twitter. So it's really great to um, be able to help curate, right, the content. 
Um, some of the things that I'm excited about, um, are especially our new tracks that we're rolling out at North America this year, um, our community, um, which is, has been there in previous um, KubeCon tracks, but our 101 track is very, very new. And I remember when I was getting started, taking a look at all of the CNCF projects, the incubation, the ones that have graduated, it was just a little, it was overwhelming. So 101 track is a great place for folks to start um, getting primers to those projects that are really relevant for them. Um, and it was a really great opportunity for, to take what I read online from a documentation perspective and actually apply it and hear about actual companies that were doing things. One specific talk I'm excited about um, is one by Christian Huckelman coming up um, in, in, in about a month. Um, that really talks about how not to start with Kubernetes. So how many times are you given direction as to what you should do? But it's really great to know maybe what you shouldn't do. So I'm really excited about that one on the 101 track, as well as um, another new track, our business value track. Um, at Delta, when you're starting the process of justifying, you know, leveraging a lot of these technologies, you have to make the case to your business partners, right? The finance organization. So now we have some real stories, um, some success stories of companies who have done this, how they did it, what things really resonated with the business side that allowed them to make that leap um, and go towards um, cloud native. That's awesome because usually the barrier between you know working with exciting technologies and um, and getting the business to go that way is is communicating the value of it. So totally super important and. Uh, I'll probably try to attend a couple of those. I'd love to just see kind of what is the case that is being made for why why people should move into cloud native architectures and and tools and um, so that's awesome. So it sounds like a lot of good opportunity to to learn in a there's a virtual component. Um, I think I lost Kellett. I'm oh, yes, I can hear you. Um, I heard the virtual component. Do you mind repeating the question really quickly? Yeah, so I know like people can attend virtually and in um, it, International people that can't travel, do you reckon? Uh, Absolutely. I think um, in KubeCon, the Europe version um, earlier this year, I had a great experience. Um, Augustus and Constance and the rest of the program committee did a great job at putting schedule together, coordinating the recordings um, and really making it a meaningful event. I think that it's going to be really neat that we're having a hybrid um, option this year that offers that same flexibility. So highly, highly recommend attending virtually if you're unable to travel um, to LA um, uh, and for KubeCon. Um, a lot of the talks will be pre-recorded um, because some of the presenters won't be able to attend. So I, still, I think the experience is going to be um, as valuable as it was earlier this year. So definitely highly recommend. Awesome. And then regardless of virtually attending or in person, what do you recommend for people to get the most out of their first time experience? Yeah, so I, I it wasn't so long ago that it was my first KubeCon. And one of the things that I really, really enjoyed was the engagement and um, building relationships. Um, I think that the way to do that remotely would be make sure that you're in, our, in the Slack channels. There's tons of communities there that you can engage with presenters, um, folks who are um, interested in the same topics as you. So you can share those best practices and share those, you know, war stories, if you will. Um, uh, another way to engage, I think, and, you know, shameless plug is Twitter. Um, you know, a lot of the <laughs> presenters are going to be tweeting. Um, so I definitely encourage you to follow, um, engage with those folks um, who are giving the talks that are relevant to your world um, so that you can continue to get that support um, in person. If you're planning on attending in person, I definitely think that you make time for our hallway track, you know, outside of going to the actual presentations, I feel like it's really valuable to talk to folks like, you know, ad hoc that you're meeting after the talks to just establish that sense of community and camaraderie that makes KubeCon KubeCon. So, yeah. Mm -hmm.